<laughs> What's up everyone, my name is Pi. And I'm Joe. Welcome to Gear Talk. This is episode four, right? No, episode five. Episode five. Yeah. Anyway, today's episode is all about how to use neutral density filters. And also, we did a little ND filter test and we have kind of our favorites and some things to say about the different brands and models that we used. So let's just jump right into this. We use ND filters on both sides of our business. So not only on creating stills and still images, but also in videos. videos yeah. So let's talk a little about what we use it for on the still side. Now first, on the still side, a lot of people see a lot of the images that we create with Linegers of Photography and also in our SR Lounge concept shoots, and they wonder how we do them. Because what we'll do is we'll be in the middle of the day, we'll go out to a scene like downtown Los Angeles, or we'll go out to the beach, we'll have our couple, and we'll slow down the shutter to get these kind of cool motion effects in elements that are moving in the background, whether it be water, whether it be buses, whatever it is, and we get these really cool effects in the shots. Yeah. But you probably know that if you set your uh, shutter to drag basically in the middle of the day when it's completely bright outside, regardless of the aperture setting that you're at on your lens, it's going to be completely blown out. Be completely blown out. So we use neutral density filters. And what these filters do is they cut down the amount of light that's coming in through the lens and their neutral density as opposed to say a graduated ND filter because they're constant all the way throughout, okay? A graduated ND filter would be darker on top and would graduate lighter. These are constant, so it just cuts down all the light coming in. This is actually a 10 stop and it's kind of cool because you can't even see yeah. through the 10 stop. You it's might... like a welding mask. It's yeah, so it's dark. ridiculous. Here is a five stop. These are Singray ND filters. Here's a three stop. Now the other purpose of using these ND filters is so that we can basically run down the aperture. We wanna open up the aperture so it's wide open mm -hmm. while still being able to get to a slow enough shutter speed in the middle of the day to be able to use, say, radio triggers. Now generally, even though they say you can get to a sync speed of one two video of a second, we try to be safe around one one sixtieth to one two hundredth because we've noticed that at one two video you still have kind of sync issues where the flash doesn't completely fire as that curtain closes. So to do that, if you're shooting wide open at, at f2 in the middle of the day, what's your shutter speed typically? It's gonna be like one eight thousandth of a second. Yeah, one four thousand, one eight thousand, so forth. So we're using five and ten stop ND filters to cut it down to the point where we can get it to one one sixty of a second, mm -hmm. and then we can shoot with flash and with wide open apertures in the middle of the day. So those are the basically the two sides that we're using ND filters for on the still side. Now, what do we do on the video side? So for the video side, um, when, especially when shooting outdoors, you wanna stay at about, depending on the frame rate that you choose, you wanna shoot at about double the shutter speed. So if we're shooting at 24 uh, P, then we wanna shoot at about a 48th or a 50th of a second. Now it gets difficult outside because if you want to maintain that shutter speed, then your aperture is gonna be at like F22, F32, yeah. something ridiculously high, and then everything's gonna be in focus, and then- Compositionally doesn't look good. It doesn't look good, it looks more like, you know, very camcorder-ish, or yeah. even like, you know, something shot on your iPhone. Um, so what we do with these ND filters is we cut down the amount of light, and um, I actually like using the variable ND filters much more, because- For video, it makes yeah. a lot more sense. So this is a SERP ND filter, which we just got, and we actually like a lot, because um, it goes from, I think, uh, two to eight and a half stops, and so you can actually see it go darker and lighter. And it gives me another element of exposure control on my lenses. And so if I wanna shoot at F2 or F2.8 or even F1.4, I can do that with these ND filters. The more professional camcorders, like our FS700 actually has ND filters built into it. Mm -hmm. But because I'm not always shooting with that and because I want ND filter control on all of my lenses, that's when these come in. Uh, well, and so basically when we're not using these variable filter, uh, variable NDs, with video, running the shutter speed up to 1, 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, 8,000, you end up with that jittery motion, yeah, right? Yeah, it looks it very staccato -y. It's It doesn't look sharp. very good. It's super yeah. sharp, it's kind of jittery, and so to get it down to a more natural look, we're using the ND filters. So I wanted to talk through basically my, my basic setup for when I'm shooting with ND filters, whether I'm doing landscapes or uh, couples or environmental portraits or whatever I'm doing. Um, I have my V photo. This is my road trip. Again, this is one of my favorite tripods. This is the carbon fiber variant and it's super small, super light. 
So I use this, I have a standard Arca Swiss plate on it, uh, and then I have my camera. Now here I have the 17 to 40 on there. Usually I'm using the 2470 or the 17 to 40, either way. Um, I believe this is a 77 millimeter thread size. This 2470 that I like to use more often than not is an 82 millimeter thread size. We'll use a pocket wizard if we are doing radio syncing, and we're actually doing a bunch of tests on other radio controls, so we're gonna have more on that soon. Uh, and then we're using the Velo Shutter Boss to trigger the actual camera when we're ready to take the shot. So it's on the tripod, we try not to move it at all. You can actually use this, it comes with wireless and wired versions. I keep the uh, wired version, I actually use the wired more than the wireless, just because it's one less thing to kind of carry around. So. I like that, and so that's basically it. And we just pop the, the lens, the filter onto the lens when we wanna get our shot, and that's it. On the video side, well, it's pretty straightforward. You're just gonna pop them on. <laughs> Let's talk about what different options we have as far as filters go, and kind of the benefits of each. Mm -hmm. So here on the Singray side, we have, these are single filters, basically. Yeah. They're one, one-sided filter, or not one-sided, but single pane, I guess, filters. They're like the prime lenses of filters. Exactly. So only one. It stop. only does one one thing. So this is a three stop. You're holding what a five I'm stop. I'm holding the five stop, and then there's a ten stop right there. This is a ten stop. So this is incredibly dark. Now the trick with uh, well the problem with basically these guys is that you're going to get the best quality for your image by using a nice single pane glass filter and one that is actually really nice quality wise. There's a reason for that. Okay, yeah. so these sing rays are. Three to four hundred dollars a piece. They're that, really expensive. Yeah. yeah, we have twelve hundred dollars of filters just between these yeah. three right here. That makes them very cost prohibitive. The reason why they cost so much, though, is well, there's a couple. One, it preserves sharpness of the lens. It's using very high quality glass, similar to the kind of glass that it's used on the lens. Mm -hmm. Two, it preserves color accuracy. So basically, yeah. the problem with most ND filters, you pop it on and it's gonna shift colors when you get it on. Yeah, a lot of people ask, why should I spend three to $400 on a filter? And the reason is because when you're cutting down this much light and it adds a lot of, a filter like that would add a lot of you know color shift or even uh, degrade your image if you're not using high quality glass. I mean, mm -hmm. you're using like a $2,000 lens and then if you pop on, like a $50 filter that degrades oh, yeah. your image, you might as well not be using a filter yeah. at all. It, it makes absolutely no sense because you invest so much in that expensive glass and then pop something cheap over the front of it. Yeah. You're gonna reduce the quality of your image. Now with these, I guess, whatever they are, prime versions of filters, mm -hmm. these single use filters, we have basically three, five stops here, three, five and 10 stops, about $1,200 worth of filters yeah. that are all encompassed with a single filter with a variable ND. Yeah, so we just talked about the SERP variable ND, which we actually like a lot because for the price, it's about, what, $189? Close to 200 bucks. Yeah. It it holds so much value. Like, in, we just did a test where we, we tested uh, this filter. We also have another variable ND filter, which is the uh, Lightcraft. Lightcraft Workshop Fader. Fader filter. Yeah. And so this also uh, goes from, I think, 2 to 8.5 stops. This goes from 2 to about 8 to 8.5 stops. And uh, it's great. I think one of the biggest benefits of using this filter, or fader filters, even for photos, is because when you're using a DSLR camera, when you pop on a 10-stop ND filter, you don't see anything yeah. through the viewfinder. It's impossible to see. And so you need to compose your shot and then add on the filter and then adjust mm -hmm. your settings or uh, to get your composition and, and exposure right. But with the fader filter, if you if you know exactly what stop you want to be at, you can kind of unfade it and then you adjust know, get your and lock your focus yeah. and, yeah. and then twist it back. And then for obviously for video, you can you know you can have that other element of control over your exposure. I have um, that exact issue, especially like I've done shots where I'll, <laughs> I'll stack the ten and the five on oh, top man. of it. Yeah, and so I'll stack both of these, and you cannot see anything. So yeah. you pre-focus, pre-lock, pre-compose, mm -hmm. and then you screw everything on to get it. So yeah, it's one really nice convenient thing. It's also, you're not having to carry around three different filters for that. Yeah. So it's one single filter, it's much less expensive, it's a lot easier to use. Going from video to stills, you can adjust right as you need, right mm -hmm. there on the, on the camera. But there are downsides. What are some of the downsides of a variable versus these guys? Uh, I think one of the bigger downsides we see, and this isn't just particularly with this variable, it's with kind of across the board, is you get uh, cross-hatching patterns when yeah. when you uh, are shifting the exposure. And the reason is because if you, I, I'm not too familiar with the science of polarizers, but I kind of know with Vader filters, you have a polarizer filter that has vertical um, polarization and another one that has horizontal. And then when they, when you're twisting the filters and getting the um, 
getting it darker, mm -hmm. there are instances where you'll world will become very clear, and yeah. that will be evident in the video or stills that you're shooting. Yeah, you actually get uh, an X pattern, and that pattern is more noticeable the higher you go in the stops. The nicer the variable, the less you're gonna get. Yeah. The Lightcraft Workshop has a very strong X pattern when you get up to eight stops, which basically makes it unusable beyond, say, six stops. So it's kind of yeah. one thing to take uh, kind of into consideration when buying a variable. The, the SERP actually did a pretty good job, and at its highest setting, it did have a little bit of X pattern to it, but it was actually still usable. We could like yeah. kind of fix the edges a little bit. I was pleasantly surprised with the SERP. Yeah. At the max stops, it was usable. Yeah. So the other downside to um, the variables is that you are layering now two sets of glass instead of one. So mm -hmm. once again, you have two panes of glass in this one as opposed to one in a standard. So it is gonna reduce sharpness a little bit more. Most likely it's gonna affect color just a little bit more because now it's passing through two layers of glass. Yeah. So you get those kind of issues as well. So as far as from an ultimate quality standpoint, you're kind of better off with one of these guys with a filter that's gonna be single use, single pane filter. For convenience purposes and for ease of use, you're kind of better off with a variable. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about basically our test. So we basically went out and we took these different shots. You can tell them about the test because you're actually one that shot the sample images, right? Yeah. So how did you do the sample images? Well, so what I did was I took, um, I had this set of filters and so I started with the SERP and uh, I took one shot at three stops, one shot at five stops, and one shot at the max. And then same thing with the fader filter, I took one shot at, one shot at three stops, one shot at five, and one shot at the max. And then with the scene arrays, I took one shot at three, one shot at five, and one shot at 10 stops of ND filter. And it was really interesting seeing the results because um, I would expect the scene array to perform the best, which it yeah. did. But it was interesting <laughs> seeing, there was, a, there was almost a, a huge color shift between the three and the five. So it's interesting yeah. seeing that it wasn't even, I think one was more green and one was more magenta. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the 10 stop was pretty good. Well, and, and the other thing too was uh, you also set your focus, locked the composition, nothing else changed, right? Yeah. So nothing changed from there. Mm -hmm. The images were shot within a very short period of time, so we had pretty even light throughout the entire thing. Yeah. So in getting the images in the post, um, I analyze them. I work on a lot of images with ND filters. And so even with a Singray, which is known to be kind of the top of the, the line type filters, you're still gonna get color shift. Mm -hmm. You're always gonna get some color shift. But the thing is that when you balance that color back with a raw file, how close can you get it back to that neutral shot? So we had a neutral shot that we took without any filters, and then we were comparing to how close we got back to it. With the Singrays, we noticed that basically with a nicer filter, you're essentially getting more magentas a little bit into the hues, maybe a little more blues and stuff, but for the most part, getting it back to neutral is very simple, very easy, and it preserves color quality extremely well, and also sharpness is preserved very well. With the variables, this is the Lightcraft Workshop one. This I actually picked up from Sammy's. I went to Sammy's about two years ago, and I said, what's your best variable ND? Mm -hmm. And this is the one that they gave me, and it was actually kind of disappointing because we got a lot of green shift, we get a lot of funky colors out of it, um, quite a bit of reduction in, in sharpness. Uh, overall, it just wasn't as good as I thought it would be, especially in the six to eight stop range. Now, this was the Mark II version of their fader, and by now maybe they have a new version with better glass, but this one was a little bit disappointing, especially because it cost over 200 bucks at the time. The SERP though, was actually pretty awesome. Um, the colors, it wasn't quite as good as the Singray, but you kind of expect that. Sharpness wise, again, a little bit of reduction in sharpness, especially mm -hmm. in different areas of the image because you are turning this and twisting it. Yeah. So sometimes the sharpness affects different areas of the image. You'll have sharp edges, but maybe a little bit in the area in the middle of the image is a little bit soft. But we are notified that they are working on new versions and, and better and better glass. So that's gonna be something that's gonna be taken care of. Yeah. But for the money though, this was absolutely fantastic. It worked incredibly well. The amount of color variation and color shift that we got in it was easily correctable. This was more of a green shift, which we kind of expected, because uh, most variables have kind of more of a green shift versus these, they were kind of more magenta bluish. Uh, but this was a more of a, of a green shift, but it still corrected better than the Lightcraft Workshop, and not quite as good as the Singray, but again, it was pretty awesome. Yeah. There's some other things as far as like convenience wise that I loved about this. One was that the stops are actually labeled. Yeah. On the side of this, oh, it's actually labeled what the stops are set to. Conveniently. 
Yes, on the and Singray, it's not. It, I'm not on Singray, on the uh, Lightcraft Workshop. It just has these little dots. How do I know what these dots are? Yeah. I have to sit here and count okay. every single dot to see where I'm at. It's a circle and a line, and that's it. Yeah, we'll show you guys what it looks like. It's just alternating lines. circles and lines. It made it really yeah. difficult to kind of know where you're at. The other thing, too, was the feel of it. Oh, yeah, this one feels uh, pretty solid. And I actually feel like I gravitate more, because I have a set of the Singray filters, too, but then I gravitate more to this just because it's just so easy to use. And, I'm, really and I'm very happy with the, the quality. And also because this is the, I think they made two versions. This is the 82 millimeter thread version, but it comes with stop down filters in this and cool this case. nice little case. Yeah, and so I, you know, it comes with two stop down filters, one 82 to 77 and one 82 to 72. And so I can use this basically on all of my lenses. That's like another 30 bucks that you yeah. spend in addition to the filter. The other thing is the quality. Um, the action on the SERP is much smoother. You can tell like the, just the craftsmanship, everything's much yeah. tighter. With the Lightcraft Workshop, this older one that we have here, um, I, I haven't used it that much and it was never dropped in sand or anything. Mm -hmm. But you can see on the inside, and we have to show a close up of this, yeah. but there's basically some sort of dust or sand that's gotten in between and there's really nothing I can do once it gets in between. But you have this loose action to it and you can hear the sand grinding and you can also see rings on it now because something's on the inside so every time I twist it, it marks the inside yeah. of the glass. So quality wise, this is not one that I'd recommend. I'd say if you're gonna go with a variable, Get something nice, get something decent, mm -hmm. and the best one that we found for the price is gonna be the SERP. the SERP. All right, now if you have the money and you wanna get the ultimate in performance and the ultimate image quality, then you could step up to something like the Singray. Of course, you're gonna to have to sell Pay a kidney to yeah. uh, get a full set. So yes, that's kind of all I have to say about ND filters. Yeah. You have anything else to say? No, I mean, a lot of photographers kind of, ND filters is almost the last thing they get, which, you know, because it's the most, mm, it's not really a necessity. But if you're at that point of your career where you want to start experimenting more with outside flash or strobing or uh, shutter drags in daytime, then definitely an ND filter is something that you want to look into. And a SERP is probably the best place to start just because it's cheap. You get across the board, everything, you know, all the stops from two to eight. Yeah. And it's just, it'll, it'll it's fit on quality. all your lenses. Yeah. It's great quality. Um, Serp's got a lot of great products that have been coming out. We've gotten a lot of them in the studio to try out. They've been fantastic yeah. so far. So we're really pleased with this ND filter and what they're doing as a company. So be sure to check those out. We'll include links to all of these filters uh, and everything in the actual article itself. So check out the article where we'll have more information. And well, that's it for episode number five. We'll see you all in the next video.